What's up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name coming at y'all with the final and I mean final preseason preview match of the 2019 preseason. Guys, we're only two weeks away from the regular season. A max of two weeks away. Technically, it's like one and a half, but we're not that far from the regular season, guys. This is crazy, man. It seemed like the off season just started a couple months ago. I mean, I guess you could technically call it a couple months, but I really mean it seems like it was only a month ago. It seems like the draft was only a couple weeks ago. Like, this crazy. This offseason passed really quick. And it was one of the quietest offseasons we ever had, man. You know, albeit <laughs> the beginning was extremely loud. But, you know, after that, for the most part, it was quiet. You know, after Odell trade, after drafting Daniel Jones or whatnot, you know, it's been relatively quiet. But, hey, man, I guess I guess it passed fast for me because, you know, I've been trying to keep you all updated with all my off-season vids and whatnot. That's how I built the channel. But regular season ain't that far away, guys, and let's let's get right into these. Uh, what I'm looking for in the final preseason matchup. Giants versus Patriots, unfortunately or fortunately, however you look at it. No starters will be playing this game, so we got to wait until the regular season for that final Eli versus Brady matchup. Y'all know me, especially after uh, Andrew Luck's retirement and, you know, Cam Newton's injury and whatnot, man. Uh, let the starters rest, bro. Let let them take a let them take a day off and whatnot. They've had, uh, from all reports, you know, all websites and whatnot, for all intents and purposes, they've had a great last week of um, training camp, very competitive, everybody doing what they need to do and whatnot. So this matchup is mainly going to be for the second, third, fourth string guys, for guys trying to make the team, for you know, uh, guys like Daniel Jones and our rookie starters, are uh, you know, other rookies getting more experience and whatnot. That's that's what this game is for. What I'm looking for first and foremost is what I've looked for in every game since week two, and that is consistency uh, and consistent above average performance. Um, you know, consistently performing above average performing at a high level even if it's against backups and whatnot like especially because it's against backups and i guess this would be a level playing field because it would be second string versus second string and whatnot i definitely want to see them performing good out there i want to see them come back to a week two type of level of play like i think week two was definitely our best preseason matchup where everybody seems to be doing everything right I'm looking to see Daniel Jones continue his absolutely stellar performance, continue with that great ball placement he's had. He's really good with ball placement and timing routes, throwing because he's developed great chemistry with his receivers, knowing when they make their cuts and when to throw the ball on time and whatnot. I'm looking to see a couple more deep shots since he will be in the game a bit longer. Maybe, you know, some play action, read option type runs where uh, he might have to be the one to come out of the pocket and run with the ball. Although I'm not hoping for it too much because there's always that risk of injury. I mean, it's weird, guys. You know, this this new breed of quarterback that everybody wants, nobody really wants a pocket passer anymore. But the new breed of quarterback, no, the mobile one or even, I guess, the hybrid where it's like their pocket passer, but they could definitely move around a bit. These are guys that are getting injured a lot more and getting their career shortened. Like, look at Brady, Roethlisberger. Well, Roethlisberger is technically mobile, but look at like Brady and Breeze and even Eli to an extent. They're playing... Uh, into their 40s really more Brady and Breeze but you know the, the mobile quarterbacks really get injured out here uh, but another thing I'm looking for in terms of improvement is I still see Jones staring down his receivers sometimes when he throws the ball he did a good job in Cincy with that throw to uh, Burton Golden down the sideline where he faked out the safety he looked like he was going one way but then quickly turned back and throwed it to Golden That's, that was a great job that was exactly what I'm looking for out of Daniel Jones now in terms of improvement because let's be honest, he's done nothing but be good. I'm just looking for him to uh, not stare down his receivers. From the offensive line, I'm not completely sure whether our starters are going to be out there or not. Uh, but since, you know, all indication points to starters resting, I'm guessing they'd be resting. But even then, from if it's the backups out there, this goes for, you know, all level of offensive linemen. Especially that of the guys that are going to be running for roster size. We usually just run... 
nine deep so it means like a couple people will be cut i'm looking for a wall guys that's what i'm looking for especially in the run game since this might be a run oriented run oriented team i'm looking to see our offensive line get a push i'm looking to see them make some holes for whoever the running back is in the pass protection game once then going back to week two was their best pass protection game i'm looking to see a wall a nice pocket it doesn't necessarily have to be a completely clean pocket but something that the quarterback can work with i'm not looking for too many sacks last week nate solder and mike remmers got beat which i was disappointed by because Bengals aren't exactly known for their pass rush but the guys got around and sacked daniel jones i don't want to see that again i'm looking to see that they keep up with their footwork and no holding calls or penalty calls i'm looking at will hernandez don't know what the deal was last week just you know good play and good clean play on the defensive line uh last week they did they did an all right job there's only two sacks that i really count because after that and i mentioned this in my recap video after o'shane zimenez's two sacks the three that came later were so late in the game that they're the guys who made them probably won't even make the team who knows but I'm looking for uh, from the guys that are starters or closest to starters because once again I'm not sure who's resting I'm looking for a good push on the opposing offensive line I'm looking for more pressure than sacks really I'm looking to see that the defense makes the quarterback scared Dexter Lawrence somebody that I've always been impressed with has been getting good push all preseason and he's been uh, double teamed because of it teams are getting smart they're looking to double team him but that of course means that there's one less person to guard on the defensive line and I expect them to take advantage of that so I'm looking for a lot of pressure a lot of push to see the opposing quarterback get the ball out quickly maybe into the hands of one of our defensive backs you know safeties and cornerbacks they've improved their play as the preseason has um, gone along and there's certainly a couple of guys out here fighting for their roster spots uh, from them I really want just you know good sticky coverage uh, I'm looking more so f for improvement in the safeties and the corners because I like what I'm seeing from our cornerbacks It's a very young group, you know apart from Janoris Jenkins everybody else is really young So, you know mistakes are to be made But our safety group the same cannot be said last week Drabil Peppers got burnt and it, the opposing receiver went for a touchdown or it was the tight end or something So this safeties and linebackers man. We got to learn how to cover tight ends It seems that every single year the Giants always get burned by them but and that that play last week was indeed um a misread route by peppers he was caught peeking in the backfield and whatnot so i'm looking for better communication along the defensive backs and them to just know who their man is and stay on their man stay stuck to their man linebackers you know i guess i kind of lumped the outside linebackers in with the defensive line a bit in terms of pressure but middle linebackers same thing for the safeties if you're in coverage stick with your man keep your eyes on the quarterback and the running back otherwise you know we'll probably be beat so all in all it's like i said at the beginning of the video i'm just looking for consistent good play man i'm looking to see that we continue to improve and that we continue to play at a high level it's the final preseason game a lot of people don't watch it but it's important to watch it for things like this and also to look at the battles for example it looks like bj goodson one of our starting middle linebackers from last year is probably battling for a roster spot. This is not something I expected at all going into this to the preseason, going into this offseason, because I thought BJ Goodson was doing a good job. Maybe he was not doing enough to keep his starting position because right now it looks like it might be Tay Davis who would start off at middle linebacker. And don't be surprised if like midway through the season, even Tay Davis gets replaced. Not because of his bad play, but perhaps because of the better play by Ryan Connolly, our fifth round pick. I can't remember what school he's from, but our fifth round pick, Ryan Connolly, he's been doing amazingly in the preseason. Even Alec Ogletree could get replaced. And I like Ogletree. I'm an Ogletree fan. Not a lot of Giants fans are. But I like him for his leadership. I think he is underrated. Once again, you don't get five or six interceptions by accident. But I think he's definitely underrated. But he's also somebody that could get replaced. Middle linebacker is definitely our weakest spot on the defense, if not on the team. Another person fighting for their roster spot, our third round supplemental draft pick from last year, Sam Beal. And the reason he's fighting for his roster spot is because this is the second year in a row now where he's entering the season injured. Where he's entering the season, he may not play. You know, and I mean, guys, the best ability in any sport is availability. Availability. No matter how good you are, if you aren't available to play, people will cut you. 
and even I like when he got injured uh, obviously I feel sorry for the guy I hope he recovers you know God bless to him but you get annoyed at a certain point it's like whoa are we did we waste a third round pick on you because you haven't even touched the field yet but you're getting injured left right and center man uh, as for somebody that I don't want to make the team but probably will Kareem Martin and I just I mean, I just don't like Kareem Martin, you know, not as a person, but as a player. I just don't think he fits this team. I definitely think our acquisition of Marcus Golden is better than him. Uh, he's still going to make the team, no doubt, but I want them to start Golden above Martin. In my opinion, Golden is a better player, and he definitely has more potential because the only reason Marcus Golden hasn't produced these past two years is because of his injury. And if, it is a big if, but if he's truly fully healthy again, Golden could be a 8 sack, 8 plus sack guy for us this year, you know? There's a couple guys on this team that could have, that could be in double digit sacks. The two biggest ones being Golden and Lorenzo Carter. And those should be our two starting outside linebackers. But right now, it's Kareem Martin and Lorenzo Carter. Another person with a big, you know, potential for sacks would be BJ Hill, especially what he did last year. But kind of getting off topic here. On the offensive line, somebody that's fighting for a roster spot is good guy chad wheeler believe it or not he's probably uh out there fighting for his position right now i would love to have him back on the team he he's a really good backup right tackle and he showed the ability uh to be um you know to step in and start for a couple of games albeit we started him for most of the season last year but a backup is only supposed to be able to take over for a couple of games chad wheeler fits that description per perfectly i hope he makes the team but there's definitely, you know, a little bit of a competition going on in that uh, those backup spots for the offensive line. Another person I would love to make at least the practice squad would be George Asafa with Jay because he's been out what seems to be the entire offseason with a concussion. And, you know, you got to take concussion seriously. We haven't really gotten to see anything from him. So, you know, I hope he's at least on the practice squad. I still want to see what we could get out of this guy. Uh Finally, on the offensive side of the ball, it will be the receivers and backup running backs. There's definitely going to be a couple receivers to be cut, but guys that I really want to make the team will be Alonzo Russell. He's been really big in hustle plays. I would like to see Darius Slayton on there. I have no doubt in my mind there, um, that he will make it, but you know you can never be too sure with these injuries, how long he'll be out for and whatnot. I'd like to see Reggie White on there. But he might not make it. Maybe somebody like Russell Shepard beats him out. Uh, and I mean, I guess that's about it. There's definitely a name that's slipping my mind. Uh, even though Britton Golden had an amazing week three, I don't really expect him to make the team. He's older than he looks, guys. And also, I think we have better receivers than him that will probably be on the spot. But if there's one receiver I had to choose, I definitely would want to see Alonzo Russell make it as a fifth or sixth string. And in the backup running back position, Wayne Gallman is probably going to get the job again. But I guess in that third position, I would actually like to see Rod Smith because Paul Perkins brings much of the same to the table that Gallman and Barkley does. So I'd like to see a little bit of a different uh, running back in, Paul, um, in Rod Smith, who's more of a hard runner that bruiser back, which is what I think we need to relieve some of the uh, stress off of Saquon Solers. But that's what I got for you all today. Preview video for the final preseason matchup. My next vid, dropping Sunday, guys, will be my final season prediction video. And then after that, we're just, we're going straight into the regular season, man. And, you know, let's go. Let's do this thing. Giants all the way, G, man. I'm out. You're, we're just. Hi, right, guys. Thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Ear.